Greetings and welcome to another I'm exhausted and need to relax with something simple thing. Yeah, after the last LGR retrospective, I need a bit of a breather. And what's more laid back than a mediocre old computer like this old beast? This is a 2004 Dell Optiplex, the most unwanted, boring PC ever, at least if you're prone to hyperbole for making a catchy video title. Uh, but for real though, I consider these early 2000s Optiplex GX machines to be utterly forgettable, even compared to all the other similar looking Dells from back then. The Optiplexes were Dell's entry-level business rigs and they clog the inventory of e-cyclers and online resellers to this day, which is how I stumbled across this one, uh, just aimlessly browsing eBay, looking for the cheapest old PC, cause why not? And uh, yeah, the GX270 that I picked up cost a whopping $32.75, about double that after shipping, and I was just buzzed enough to click buy it now. And once this sucker arrived, it got me thinking, what is the most boring unwanted PC anyway? There's a lot of options, so I posted the question to y'all and you certainly came through with uh, lots of you agreeing that, yep, no one wants a boring Optiplex like the one I picked up. Their awfulness fits the bill but also the hundreds of other responses, ranging from bog standard Packard Bells to dirt cheap e-machines things to underpowered netbooks. All solid choices, but for me, yeah, there are multiple reasons why these have such a bad reputation. So let's explore what's going on and see if this Optiplex even works anymore. Well, here we go. The most boring, unwanted type of desktop personal computer, at least for the purposes of this video. You know, there's uh, obviously all kinds of other options. A lot of great ones that y'all came up with in that Twitter thread, but uh, this one, I would just say it's the most boring, unwanted one because, uh, well, well, there's really a few reasons. Uh, the number one is, J just look at it. <laughs> Nothing about this design appeals to me. Personally, it is the epitome of okay, I know to some it'll be nostalgic, especially the horizontal desktop version, since tons of those were in schools, libraries, and workplaces, and maybe it'll become aesthetically desirable in the future, but from my view right now, it's just a bluish gray box that blends into the background. I used to see these littering thrift store shelves for years and years, and I was never once tempted to pick one up back then, not the least of which is because they cost $150 through Goodwill. So that's the first reason. It's just kind of uninspiring and whatever, who cares? Uh, but the second is because, well, this is just a generic business computer. It's not meant for uh, home users. You know, it's not an XPS Dell computer or even one of the precision workstations that were kind of higher end versions of these Optiplexes. And, uh, you know, even the Dell Dimensions for the home, those can be slightly interesting because of their graphics card other things maybe i don't know those are kind of boring too but uh you know, what i'm trying to say is it's a boring business machine meant for boring business tasks you know it's kind of like a fleet pickup truck it's no frills it does the job that it needs to and pretty much nothing more hopefully it's reliable but you know once it's not then you just you get rid of it and move on to whatever the next thing is that your company buys in massive numbers and it's just subsidized and, and boring <laughs> and unwanted as soon as its purpose has been served. As for what kind of purpose and who was interested in buying these, well, here is one of the few ads I can find for the GX270 in the ABA journal, The Lawyer's Magazine from September 2003. And yeah, prestigious association, prestigious discount. Ask about our ABA member advantage discounts. Yeah, subsidized. Business computers, about $1,100 with that discount here in 2003. And you can see the specs going on there with the Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz, 512 megs of RAM, 40 gig hard drive, just the thing that you need to do your lawyering or government work or whatever. This one in particular coming from Dallas County was the property of theirs. I mean, I did get it from a seller in Texas, so that makes sense. Yeah, it's been wiped, who knows what it actually did for it's boring life, but no doubt it was boring government stuff. 
And the third and perhaps biggest reason that it's unwanted is the fact that this comes from the peak of the capacitor plague era. In fact, this Optiplex range, the GX200 series, it became like a, a beacon, a symbol of that awfulness that was the capacitor plague of the early to mid 2000s. Dell in particular got in a lot of trouble, especially later on, some years later, when a bunch of stuff leaked uh, that they knew that this was an issue and continued with it anyway. They shipped over 11 million of these affected business computers. They pretty much all died or were expected to die from capacitors leaking, bulging, corroding the whole deal with an estimated 97 percent of these types of computers are pretty much dead or going to die and if this is not dead I would be shocked the seller said it was tested to power on who knows what that means I don't know if it has a display I don't, I don't know anything I haven't tested it who knows I haven't looked inside yet so you're absolutely gambling by getting one of these if it hasn't been restored and by all accounts this one has not uh, it does have this right here, which opens up to uh, reveal headphones as well as a couple of USB ports in kind of a weird position. Uh, that's what that is. And uh, we have a floppy drive, a CD, I think that's just a CD-ROM drive. And it's a little scuffed up. That's fine. And around back we see a 250 watt power supply and one of those cooling situations, I think probably for the CPU, a lot of these have like duct work in there to sort of push the CPU air outward. And then, um, yeah, a, a variety of uh, ports and things all integrated. Sometimes I'd see like a modem on the back of these, um, but that's about all I've ever seen added onto them because the video's integrated. I mean, everything is. You got sound, serial, parallel, PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse, bunch of USB and some ethernet, and that's it. <clears throat> However, one nice thing is the fact that and being a business machine, it was uh, meant to be toolless. Relatively, anyway. Oh, yeah, we got the Windows XP Pro 1 to 2 CPU license right there. So that's nice. But uh, yeah, we got a little button here, and I think another one here on the bottom. It should just lift apart. It's stiff, but it uh, does open. So yeah, look at that. All kinds of rails and mounting hardware, all this coolest design for everything so the hard drive actually is still in there it's just been wiped as far as i know and uh i'm already seeing a bulging capacitor there oh and more yeah this is this is plague ridden light corrosion there but more bulging noticeable over here though yeah that's not uh promising at all a couple of those bulging and you can see the junk coming out of the top and it looks like the bottom as well. That might have corroded even the tray that the motherboard is sitting on. So, hmm, some heck and dust bunnies in there. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, other than the, the dirt and grime and corrosion and everything else being awful, well, that seems to be in good shape. Got some RAM in here. I think 512 megs on this model. I'm trying to see if there's any more noticeable, immediately noticeable corrosion. Honestly, no. There's the shroud for the Pentium 4 CPU, no doubt needing some replacement paste, thermal grease. Got a battery there, no doubt dead. A little PC beeper. You know what, whatever. I'm just gonna power it on. Like, you know, it's 30 bucks, which <laughs> in 2024, that's uh, pretty darn cheap for a computer. So uh, if it doesn't work, uh, whatever. And if it does, then hooray, I guess. It's Pentium 4. Uh, Windows XP thing, but it actually might be pretty decent downgraded to 98. I'm even gonna clean it up. Just gonna plug it in and see what we get. Can't imagine uh, it'll actually function. I really have my doubts with those capacitors, but okay, sirrah, sirrah. All right. There goes nothing. Oh, it's already. I didn't even press the power button. Holy crap. Wow, okay. Well, it is at least running a little bit. Uh, dead battery, of course. I genuinely did not expect it. Like I said, the seller said they tested it, but I mean, you never know. This was also one of those auctions where they had like dozens of them available. So I just, it's just you just get a random one. You don't get the exact one pictured or anything. So, wow, this is actually, kind of working. 
my goodness. October 20th, 2003. So we have our Pentium 4 2.8 gigahertz right there. So got the hard drive and floppy and CD-ROM seemingly being detected. The same with our RAM, 512 megs. Dude, you might actually have something to mess around with here. OS install mode, what does that mean? This determines the maximum amount of system memory available to the OS. Ah, that's awesome. So for instance, installing the Windows 98, it doesn't like too much RAM. So you can have that uh, show to the OS as just 256 megs to get it installed. And you know, I was thinking of installing 98 on here, depending on if I can find drivers for this, but I'm gonna look online real quick and uh, we'll report back. That's crazy. Uh, genuinely with the as bad a state as those capacitors were in, I did not expect it to just straight up be okay, except for uh, just the, the BIOS battery. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Could run into some garbage. Anyway, off to look at drivers. Oh, heck yeah, just as I was hoping. <laughs> One of the positives, always, of getting such a boring, commonplace machine from a, a big manufacturer like Dell is that they're probably gonna have the drivers still right up available for uh, download on their website, although I'm not seeing Windows 98. That said, though, like this just came up immediately on archive.org searching for 98 drivers. So somebody else wanted to use a GX7 or GX270 with Windows 98 and uh, finding the 98 drivers where well, it was kind of a pain. So they posted them here and yeah, somebody else is being like, dude, that's awesome. So thank you to Nathan PM for uploading those. That'll be handy, but I mean, we've also got service manual and other documentation just straight up available as well as resource driver and utility CDs and Definitely a positive going with something so ordinary. If I had capacitors that were suitable for this, I'd go ahead and swap them, but uh, I don't have them. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the battery and thermal paste. And just see how it goes with uh, <laughs> bad capacitors. That's awesome. This is a really easy to work on design indeed. Oh no, am I starting to like this? <laughs> Very dry and crusty. Now the thermals on these are kind of, well, some of these models are kind of notoriously bad anyway. So I definitely want to give it the best chance we can in terms of cooling capability. Yeah, screw that, we'll just take this guy out of there. I want to look at it. Mmm, Pentium 4, such as it is. Such an inefficient chip, uh, SL6PF. But yeah, cooling has never been a strong suit of these optiplexes of this generation with the clamshell and all that. I mean, there's just no intake for cool air, really. Uh, you got this exhaust here and you do at least have the shroud on this one. Some of them don't, but yeah, I mean, there's some grating here, but there are no fans for cool air to come in. Nothing really in the front or the sides or anything really. You got the power supply fan and this for the CPU that just kind of, uh, yeah, it's just a big heat sink. It's not even directly actively cooled. It's just an exhaust fan near the heat sink with the shroud. And that's all you get for cooling. It was generally the uh, the more cramped, compact, smaller form factor and the, the desktop form factor ones that suffered more from what I gather. That's probably not ideal here either though is the thing. Windows 98 on here. Hey, Flurpner, what time is it? It's 3.18 p.m. Go with Windows 98, second edition. Oh good, the CD-ROM actually opens. <laughs> okay, well there we go. It did at least have a partition, so... So far, so good. Everything copied over just fine, detected the hardware that it could, and it's just doing its thing, installing Windows 98 here with that hitch so far. Like, what kind of luck? I mean, if we just somehow skirt the consequences of having bad capacitors and a GX270 of all things, then that may as well get a lottery ticket. That does not seem very common. No sound, but that's entirely expected. All right, we have successfully gotten Windows to see that we have a computer. Just doesn't know it's in there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the, uh, that archive that I found from that guy from the thing and the, the stuff is, you know what I mean? Well, 
it's a couple days later. I've been messing around with this and I continue to be impressed yet slightly concerned. It's just working. I was able to get all of the uh, drivers going except for this one right here, but uh, all the other chipset stuff installed just fine. Uh, thank you very much to Nathan on uh, Internet Archive for uploading this. This made it so much easier to just go through here and get everything going and not having to hunt down these drivers myself. But yeah, uh, it's it's just working, man. Uh, do not take this as an endorsement of, oh, you don't need to replace your capacitors. If this were pretty much any other computer, I would not be pushing it like this. I mean, there is a risk of power things going wrong, you know, instability. I mean, capacitors are there for a reason. They make sure voltages remain stable. There's no spikes and they're there. They should be there. Anyway, it's working with dead capacitors or bulging, leaking ones. This is an outlier. This is not the norm. And I don't recommend doing what we're about to do, which is test some games. SimCity 3000 Unlimited, which I just happen to have on hand since I just covered it on LGR. My goodness, the CD-ROM gets very loud. Uh, but yeah, one thing I was really wanting to test on here in particular was the video because it just has that integrated uh, 82865G standard Intel integrated graphics thing, but it says eight megabytes approximate memory, at least here in DX Diag. However, if you go to the actual information control panel deal, it ranges between one and 64 megs. Currently 13 is being used, but I believe this just adjusted up to 64 megs depending on the needs of whatever's running. Yeah, I truly, uh, I truly was not expecting this graphics chip to be any kind of good. <laughs> and I mean, it's not amazing, but for Windows 98, I mean, dang. I'm gonna leave this on 800 by 600, but let's just load, yeah, kind of a larger city here. And it does take a little bit of time to get everything loaded in. You get this uh, initial kind of uh, nothing is happening deal when you first load in a city. But you can see I'm scrolling around. It's, I don't know, letting me scroll for the most part. This is not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, this is definitely gets kind of hefty though, relying a lot on the processor, but also the hard disk and CD-ROM as well. I think mostly for music, maybe some assets. I mean, when I was capturing this, I was on a one gigahertz Pentium 3 with 16 meg Voodoo 3, and honestly, the performance isn't too far off. Yeah, it's pretty good. And that was running off of a, a flash media solution instead of the spinning hard disk. Oh, ah, that fast scrolling, dang it. <laughs> it does not like CPUs this quick, which is ah, interesting because of uh, the fact that it really needs a fast CPU. But anyway, yeah. There are patches to fix that. I just haven't applied those. Uh, this is fully playable, I would say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't know what to expect with that Intel integrated graphics kind of situation. Uh, it definitely chugs, but it chugs in the way that SimCity 3000 always chugged on hardware back then. And honestly, this is a, a heck of a lot better than I experienced it when it was new. It would definitely uh, benefit from a no CD crack. That is for sure. But what doesn't? All right, so next up we have some Unreal Tournament, the uh, 99 edition. I thought about putting 2004 in here, but it didn't. Anyway, don't need a CD for this, thank goodness. Yeah, let's do Heal Pod 2. Seven bots. <laughs> I loaded in just fine. It's running pretty great. Oh, would you die already? <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's try another map. Uh, do Morpheus. It can be a bit of a thing. Ooh, especially with seven bots. Sound weirdness there, but yeah, it seems to even out. Maybe it's just a a bit of a thing with oh yeah, starting up with all those sound effects playing at once. <laughs> oh 
okay. Guess they didn't have much else left. Uh, yeah, this is running pretty darn well. Gotta say. It, again, I just didn't know what to expect with this particular graphics chip. You know. Uh, it, it definitely is gonna struggle on something closer to when it came out, you know, 2003, 2004 kind of era. But uh, late 90s stuff. Ah, oh, no frags from that at all. <laughs> late 90s stuff, Windows 98 in particular, I mean, that's what makes these types of machines, maybe not this one in particular, but these types of, uh, like, Pentium 4, just uh, kind of appealing for Windows 98. So yeah, let's do something a little bit later, uh, 2003, at least for this PC port. GTA Vice City. Ugh, again, the CD-ROM. It wouldn't be so bad if it weren't right beside my head. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to leave it on the default settings that it put it on as I installed it. 640 by 480, 16-bit with the, yeah, draw distance kind of low but tolerable. And we got plenty of RAM, we got plenty of CPU. It really is just the video that made me most curious. And well... Uh, it's, it's really not that bad. At least, just kind of, well, <laughs> getting, getting some skipping and, and stuttering for sure, but it just kind of generally wandering around with not too much going on. It's, you serious? <laughs> Wasn't quick enough on the accelerator there. Let's get into some trouble here. Yeah, def definitely a little wonky as we're just going at speed throughout the world as things load in. It's definitely feeling like it's maybe loading more off of the CD-ROM than it should. I don't know. Because it's, it's, it is spinning that disc at full speed there. And I do have like the full uh, installation option chosen when setting this up, getting it installed. Also, hard disk considerations, you know, I didn't uh, upgrade it or anything. It's just the generic 40 gig drive that I think it originally had in there from the factory. So, don't know exactly if that's up to snuff or I haven't done any speed tests on that. But, yeah. All right, yeah, let's get some stuff to explode here. See how that goes. Not bad. Certainly smooths out a bit as things load into memory, which is to be expected, so. But yeah, I'm getting that kind of stuttering and, and weirdness no matter what. Um, but yeah, like I said, 2003 to 2004 is kind of reaching the limits of uh, what I imagine this would be useful for anyway, at least without upgrading the video, because yeah, it even says on here, yeah, it needs a, well, it says 32 megs. I think it went up to 64 for San Andreas as the minimum, maybe 128, and then it recommends uh, 64 meg plus DirectX 9 or compatible. And I'm still just weirded out that it's doing just fine with those capacitors. Uh, again, though, don't recommend this. The instability and power concerns alone, especially if you have hardware in there that you don't want to get messed up. But this $30 boring PC, I don't really care. I haven't tested this, but I imagine it's going to be kind of awful with the actual DOS stuff. I mean, just Realtek AC97 audio basically running it straight through the integrated thing. We have the GS Wavetable synth for MIDI, but that's it. There's no FM synth emulation or Sound Blaster emulation that I can tell, at least not with this particular set of drivers that I am using. So it's possible there might be some form of compatibility in DOS, under Windows anyway. I guess we'll try that. Try some Epic Pinball here. Usually a good way to just see if anything is detected. Oh, wow. Huh. Try the Pro. No way. Well, I wasn't expecting that. No kidding. There's some weird crackling, but this is more than I was expecting for sure. Oh yeah, that's not great. But again, I was expecting nothing, so. The fact that we're getting any sound at all is kind of kind of a bonus. This is, you know, a notoriously difficult one to get going just right, which is why I like to test it. Especially on machines like this that are 
later and faster and have weird integrated things going on. Because yeah, I just straight up didn't see anything listed that would lead me to believe that this could do that. Uh, let's try ad lib though. Yeah, that makes total sense. So no OPL 2 or 3 or any kind of FM synth emulation. General MIDI we should have. Yeah. It's just that generic, awful GS wavetable synth that was included uh, through software and it's bad. Yeah. You're not going to get anything in this. And that's because there's no FM synth emulation. Honestly, with a sound card upgrade, like a Sound Blaster Live 128 type of deal, and a nice AGP video card, this would be pretty darn good as a Windows 98 machine. Or, you know, Windows XP, really, depending on what you want to play. You know, as much as I try to dislike this thing, I just can't help but feel some appreciation for it, simply as a straight up piece of equipment, like a tool for getting things done. You know, like a, a well-built hammer, or you know, like those rundown pickup trucks that we were talking about earlier, which both I admittedly have a, a utilitarian soft spot for, come to think of it, but yeah, you know, sometimes boring is all you need. But as a PC collector, I, I still cannot recommend these particular Optiplexes, even with the nice toolless case design. The fact that this one is running, it's just, it's still on busted caps. It's leaky, that is a fluke. It really shouldn't be doing as well as it is. And if you really want an Optiplex, there are far better Intel Core machines from a couple years right after this for similar pricing. Uh, plus, there's the fact that it's still, <laughs> just butt ugly, uh, you know, give me something angular in aluminum or beige or even pure black over this any day. This bluish gray on gray blob is, a, is just a design that doesn't appeal to me. Uh, maybe you like it, good for you, but my eyes glaze over every time I see it and a little bit of my soul dies every time. So uh, yeah, uh, that's about it for this thing. Uh, again, just a simpler video while I recover my footing and work on more involved projects. Uh, I'm happy that this actually works for the time being, but I've already ordered some capacitors to do a replacement later on. Uh, there's no way I'm adding any new uh, video cards or new parts or upgrades without taking care of that stuff first. But you know, all in due time, gotta wait for that stuff to arrive. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this nonsense, then great. Stick around for more videos soon, and uh, let me know in the comments what comes to mind when you think of the most unwanted, boring PC that you normally wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. And as always, thanks for watching LGR.